TP-Link um, Powerline Wi-Fi Extender Kit. So this is how we firmware upgrade the actual Wi-Fi hotspot. And I will show you how to join it to your existing network as well. There's the easy way and there's the hard way. Now, I've on this one particular one here, I've tried connecting the Wi-Fi um, Powerline Extender here directly to the router's Wi-Fi using the, the, the switch at the side. And i also got a switch at the side on my um, router itself. Connecting that should then copy the SSD settings from my router onto my power line extender here, but obviously it doesn't happen. Um, it's not working for some reason. I've, I've done it about three or four times. I've even moved this box directly next to this box, so it's in literally about two inches away, um, and it still won't join up at all. So basically what I've done is um, this little box here is actually plugged on my desktop. This one's plugged in another plug uh, socket in my hallway, which is right next to my router itself. So basically what should ha should happen is once it connects onto the network, you should be able to go to this uh, address here, tplinkplc.net, click on it, and it should then bring the, the interface up of your router, but obviously it doesn't. So this doesn't work. So sometimes it may work for you, but it may, if it doesn't work for you, then the other way, way around to get to it on your network because also if you already got a pre-existing router it's going to have dhcp on it so it's going to also assign its own ip address so you need to find out so on my bt router and um, i have a thing called my network uh, when he clicks on there it gives you a list of all the ip addresses that the dhcp and also if it's got a fixed ip it's already reassigned so i scroll down and look for the ip address sometimes it does not always look um doesn't come up with its name sometimes so it's kind of like guessing really so i know the 100 the 100 dot 100 addresses are dhcp addresses and it's in brackets it shows you there so it's literally going through to look for the one that's kind of like it's just just being registered that's probably the easiest way to find it um that's obviously emitting no data hardly any data anyway so if i scroll through here very quickly i will should be able to pinpoint this uh coming up very shortly so it is somewhere along if i look a bit more Look a bit more, and I should see it come up uh, on my list somewhere. But it doesn't matter because I already know what the IP address is. So I'll just kind of show you. So it should appear in here um, as an address, uh, and I can't seem to find it. <laughs> Trust me, you're doing recording, and it's not showing up. There it is. It has shown up. So it's now resolved the, the name. So that's the name of what we're trying to connect to, uh, and that's the IP address. So I will take the IP address, put it into the browser, which I have done here, and that brings it to the actual interface. So if I go back a little bit here, so go back to that, so you get this page up. So this is the interface for that wireless um, device. Um, so I can see on here the channel numbers, pass the password assigned to it. It's all the basic stuff that comes default settings with it. So um, what I want to do is, first of all, I want to firmware upgrade this to make sure it's on the right firmware. So we click on the settings, we look at the firmware upgrade, and we see that it's on like version 1.00. That normally indicates that roundabout normally indicates it's an old firmware and it's been sitting there for quite a while. So I, I take this um, in my search bar, I Google it, and eventually you'll come up with a page which has got the downloads. So this comes straight to that. Lucky enough, this comes to the download page, but you can go to like the um, tp-link.com forward slash UK forward slash support and downloads, and it'll eventually bring you to this and you, then you check. So choose hardware version. As you can see, the hardware version is tp-link here at uh, 2.0. So we make sure the this is on two, version 2, 2.0. And then it obviously gives you the, the utility, utilities, uh, setup videos, frequent ask questions, and firmware. Now, this is the latest version. You can check uh, if it's definitely the latest version because this will show you the build number. So that's the name of the device, uh, version 2, build 1.0.10. And we are on build 1.0.0. So definitely a new one. So we click on download, which we already have done. Uh, once that's been downloaded, I can then browse for that uh, and go and find where I've downloaded it to. Um, there we go. Might have to unzip it, actually. May not. Yes, we need to unzip it first. I thought so far. I've got to double check. So we go back to my downloads. Uh, we'll unzip the file. And inside the file, we should contain the bin file. There you go, the bin file there. And also, it's got a PDF um, talking about uh, how, how to do it. as well in details and instructions for that. We don't need that. Um, I'm actually showing you how to do that. So we click browse again. This time we go into the folder. We pick up the bin, um, which is the actual firmware itself, and it also confirms the version as well. Click open, and then we click upgrade. Uh, the firmware upgrade. Do you want to continue? Of course we do. Upgrade, and here we go. It continues to upgrade. So it's 
it shouldn't take too long. It's not a massive, massive file. That goes through there, and it should then force it into a reboot. And once it's rebooted, we can then set up the rest of the configuration. So we'll speed this up um, in a sec. Didn't need to respin it. Now it's rebooting. I'm going to do the whole thing. This is this is it live, so you can kind of see how long it does take to reboot. So this is firmwareing the actual. If we go back to our devices here, it's actually firmwareing the power line extender bit here. But I don't think these require because these are just literally glorified giga um, like power line Ethernet ports. Um, so you just plug it into your power line, connect a cable to it. And then this automatically will actually pair with it automatically straight from the box, which is awesome. So you don't have to do anything between these two. They're already they're already linked in. Um, then you just put this in in the room where you need it to have Wi-Fi. It does have an Ethernet port on the side, so if you do need to connect a computer into it, you can do it wirelessly or you can do it by a hardwire cable as well. But this is the device we need the firmware. These don't need firmwareing. Um, so hopefully by now, go through and. It's yeah, so it's trying to reconnect back again. So give a couple of seconds. We'll go to the page and we'll re put the IP address in that we had it uh, 100. Dot, and it was 119 and um, comes back up again. It always defaults back to that uh, TP link thing. Um, obviously, when you first enter, it does ask you to change the password. So please change the password, write it down so don't forget it. Or you will have to do a, a full hardware hard factory reset. Um, so we're just typing the password that I gave it to. So it does it on the first um, first time you do the um, you connect to it. It asks you to change the password straight away. And I forgot what the password is. Um, and I remembered it. There you go. So please do write the password down. Give it a nice secure password. Don't put it as a pet's name or a partner's name. Give it a proper secure password. Because you don't know who's around trying to connect to your network. You, you just never know. So there we go. So that's now been firmware update. It looks slightly different. I don't know what the actual changes are. But there is in the text sheets on their website details on what's been updated. But it brings the firmware up and make it more compatible, more secure. It does add features into it. Because I haven't really played around with this interface. I don't know exactly what the new features are. Sometimes if you've got this and you've used it a while, then you get a firmware upgrade. You do notice the differences uh, in there as well. So, and then got the basic settings here, the basic SSID, the advance, and then we've got more settings here as well. So you can set this time zones and things like that, because you can put a time zone server in it. Um, and it'll pinpoint those ones if you wanted to and that will just get a time from a, a time server on the internet if you wanted to but I've, I've never done so it's always seemed to be um the correct time anyway it's picked up the correct time anyway i think it's using um yeah i think it, i think it just picks a basic one anyway um they can do a manual i think manual yeah manual is you can set it manually or get it so obviously it does go for somewhere anyway but you don't really need that. They like saving time. You can enable that if you want to. But straight out of the box, I'll just leave it as it is anyway. It's not much really you need to configure on this side here. So you've got system log, um, password login, uh, old and new, reboot. So you can reboot it manually, back up. So you can back up your, your settings if you wanted to uh, and restore them. Firmware again. So there we go. There's the firmware version 1.0.10. So that's the latest one we're on. So it's nice. And time settings, advanced settings here, very much all to do with the Wi-Fi bits. We got one mesh, which is all part of the um, TP-Link stuff, which we'll, we'll look at that a bit later date. Uh, we've got guest network. Um, I, I turn that off. There's no point in having that. Parents control. Um, you can add parents control. I don't know what, what features it actually gives you. But normally, it's kind of setting MAC addresses, but it's knowing every device your kid uses to put the MAC addresses in here manually in here. Uh, I know there's an app for it, which we'll do um, a look at the app as well later. But for the moment, we're just literally just going over um, doing a firmware update onto this and then change the Wi-Fi settings. So we want to match this the same Wi-Fi settings as my network. So we're going to actually do that right now. So it's quite straightforward. This is a common question I get asked all the time. And uh, they say, well, how do I join um, so it's all on one network like SID? So every Wi-Fi device you've got that's, that's configurable like this, because uh, if I leave it as it is at the moment, I got A1 that's my main one, which is which is SNJ Media Group um, Broadcasting. Then you'll see at the moment it's broadcasting TP-Link, 
with, a, with its little number. So in theory, that's two Wi-Fi networks. That means it creates two profiles in your phone. So you've got lots of devices to connect to. That means you, you have to get connect to two profiles to make sure they connect to them inside the house. And obviously, there is a bit of a delay time between um, connecting from one Wi-Fi network to the other. It's easy to just put it all on one one profile, one use, one SSD name. So SMJ uh, dash media uh, group. Um, that's that. Um, so we leave the settings that is recommended auto. That's all fine. Uh, and we then literally go save. Click OK. So that now apply the settings. Um, I think this broadcast is 2.4 and 5 gig gigahertz. So I would use this on both. Click on five. Um, change that over to that one, click save, uh, change made to Wi-Fi, it's fine, click OK, and then apply those settings. Because your phone should automatically work out whether, it, whether it's going to connect with 2.4 or 5. Uh, a lot of the newer phones now will go, oh, if, if 5 is out there, I'll connect to 5. If it's an older phone that doesn't support 5, it'll connect to 2.4. Um, there's only differences. 5 is good for streaming um, and 2.4 is very much for penetration. So if you've got a lot of walls to go through, um, that will stretch a bit further. 5 is, is good for high you know, internet streaming and all that kind of stuff. Works much, much better as well. Now, I've changed the um, SSIDs, but I need to make sure the password for my um, uh, network are identical. Others, as they won't actually be as one network. So if I remember what my passwords were... I think it's that one. So copy that one for that one. So click on save. Click OK, reboot. Should have done this in, on both at the same time. And 2.4. Make sure when you're doing this that your SSID, your main one, which is what comes from your router, is is in is come paste exactly in. So it's going to be exactly the same spelling. Whether it's got lowercase, uppercase, it's going to be exactly the same. Make sure it's got the same password. Because the last thing you do, it will still see that as a... Um, network, but you may get confused and go, "Well, it it's broadcasting one as that, but it's got a different password." You're trying to put in, so make sure they've got the same SSID and it's exactly the same password. And click save, click OK, and now once that's been configured, when I click on my um, my icon for looking at all networks, I should now only see the uh, SNJ Mini Group. Um, one i shouldn't see tp link anymore it um it should now resolve itself as one whole network now so when i go between rooms uh, my, my phone will automatically click to the next strongest point because it's got the profile stored in there exactly the same as my router one it should hop over very quickly and connect seamlessly basically so i'm just going to do a reboot because it's not showing up on my system as um separate networks i'll just do a reboot click yes and it'll go into reboot. And that's a straightforward thing. As a common question I get asked, people saying, I still got a number of networks still showing and, and I've set up profiles. I've just been to, a, uh, I say, a friend's house and they've got um, three access points in there. And they've all got their own separate Wi Fi. One's called downstairs, one's called upstairs, one's called ceiling. And they've all got different passwords and they've all got different SSD names. And I said, Why you got them all like that? Was how it was set up. So I'm going going back in there and I'll be setting up a new system for them. So all the access points has one SSD, one password that works on all. And, this, and basically I've been showing you on here, um, with this tutorial, that's how you do it. That's the best way of doing it and the easiest way. And obviously for management wise, straightforward. So hopefully it won't give it a different IP address. I think it's on the same one. It's thinking about it, it's still rebooting, I think. I should better reconnect back. And if I browse my network, which is off my screen at the moment, I should be able to see I've got no TP links in there at all. And I've just got one there called SNJ Media Group. That's what I need to see. Um, so we now got them set up. Um, oh, can't remember what the password is. So now, now on my network, um, my router access point and my TP link access point, which is what we just configured today, is now one network. And it's all under SNJ Media Group with the, with the same passwords. Now, the other thing is, quick question, FAQs for you guys, another common question as well, is on you can get a, like a wireless scanner app on your phone and you can scan for all the wireless next network points around you. Because don't forget, you, if you've got neighbours next door to you, their broadcast will come over. And nine times out of ten, channel five and 48 are normal default channels for these devices they kind of just sit on. 
Um, so you can actually see what you're broadcasting on. It will show all your neighbours ones broadcasting on. So if your neighbours ones are all sitting on channel five for the, for the two point four and the five gigahertz at four, forty eight, channel forty eight, you can actually change those to a different channel, and that way it stops their their Wi Fi uh, signal interfering with your signal because they can cross over and they can counter counter cancel out each other, and that's when you start getting uh, Wi Fi issues and problems, slowness, connects one minute, drops the next. All that kind of stuff. So if your neighbours or any of your neighbours sitting on on five and forty eight, change it to a channel that's not been used. So if you if channel six is not going to be used on two point four, change it to channel six or channel seven or channel eight. Long as the other broadcast on your app shows no one else is using it. And same with your five gigahertz forty eight, change it to fifty or something like that. There's some options in there when you go through those. Very simple to change uh, under the advanced on here. It's under Wi Fi uh, Wi Fi settings. Um, channel number they go it's auto so it always autos to five so you have options on here so on 2.4 you can go from channel one right up to channel 13 and on the 5.1 you've got um anything from 36 um there's not much options on that one 36 40 44 48 find which ones no one else is using and hop onto it but if your channel 36 is broadcasting and no one else is broadcasting you don't need to change it only change it if someone else is sitting on it then that way it stops those signals cancelling each other out and you should have a really nice wi-fi experience so there you go that's um all set up is it's we firmware it we configured it on the same network and we're now ready to roll so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to join my channel, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Here at SMJ Media Group, we are a non-profit company supporting local businesses by making fun media content. If you like our content and would like to support us, please go to buyusacoffee.com slash SMJ Media Group and buy us a coffee.